Okay, good evening. Uh, my name is Madison Huffman, and this is my unexpected journey. First, who is vaguely familiar with The Hobbit, the book, the movies, the animated series? That was supposed to be funny. You guys are missing out. <laughs> so, as a refresher, uh, The Hobbit is a fantasy novel by J.R.R. Tolkien following the adventures of Bilbo Baggins, a little hobbit only four feet tall. Uh, he lives in a hole in the ground, not a stinky, dark, wet hole. No, it is a hobbit hole filled with books and tea and all the comforts of home. Traditionally, uh, hobbits are plain, quiet folk. They have no use for adventures, nasty, disturbing, uncomfortable things. We all feel like Bilbo some days, especially with winter being so cold. We just want to cuddle up with a warm book and a roaring fire and pretend the snow is not outside. <laughs> I felt like Bilbo most days, and so in looking for a career, I wanted something that was really comfortable and predictable. And so I thought, hey, why not working at the library? I like it there. I've worked with the people before, and I think it's a really great environment. For my internship, I worked at the Springfield Green County Library, where I worked in the five main departments. Uh, when I was there, we mostly prepared for the Remington book sale. Okay, who's ever been to a Remington book sale? Okay, so you know that there are thousands of books to look through. Uh, what I did as an intern, I uh, took the books off the shelves, uh, took them out of the system, marked up the tags, and uh, shipped them into boxes and sent them out the door. And I also did other things that a librarian might do, basically keeping the books all nice and tidy. Uh, what I really enjoyed about my internship was, of course, working with the books. And something that I didn't expect to like as much as I did was working with the people. So then I thought, maybe I don't want to be a librarian. Maybe I want a career where I can work with people uh, more on a day-to-day -day basis, more so than I could uh, being a librarian. And so because I didn't really look at uh, people-oriented careers from the beginning, I really didn't know where to start. And it reminded me of this quote. Uh, that Gandalf says, uh, there is nothing like looking if you want to find something. You certainly usually find something if you look, but it's not always quite the something you're after. And so I thought and thought, and the deadline was coming up, and I thought, hey, what about teaching English? And then I thought, no, no, that's too easy, too predictable. So many people want to be English teachers, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized that it fitted what I wanted as a lifestyle and for a career. That's because it deals with creativity, people and ideas, and most important to me, literature. Now, every career has its ups and downs, its pros and its cons, but what I think um, is the most, you know, best benefit of teaching high school English would be uh, working with interpretation and uh, being more creative with lessons. You can be a lot more creative in a high school English class than you could in a, on an elementary level. That's because some of the books that we deal with um, have a lot of symbolism and I'm all about that. It's something that elementary schoolers might not understand. And because of these books, you know, they have so much symbolism and difficult concepts. When you have a classroom full of kids from different backgrounds and have different ideologies, when they come together and they talk about symbolism in one book, they all bring something new to the table. So even if you've been teaching the same book for like, I don't know, 10 years or whatever, uh, there's always something new to be brought to the table. And then the cons of teaching, really in any uh, class or subject, would be grading and prep work on weekends and unmotivated students. With the grading in English, you can't give the kids a scantron, pop it into the machine, and out comes their grade. Uh, with English, you write a lot of papers, and so you have to go through and take your time writing beneficial comments to the students. And with unmotivated students, that's really, it happens in any classroom, and I saw it a lot with tutoring. And it's the teacher's job to find out what motivates the student and gets them going so that they can be a more successful adult in the future. And teachers do a lot more than, you know, standing up at the front of the room and telling you things that you need to do. Um, they uh, also prepare students for state testing, which can sometimes get in the way of actual learning. Uh, they also prepare uh, establish <laughs> <laughs> they also establish a healthy learning environment for the kids where they feel that they're in a safe place and can openly share their ideas. Something that teachers do that's a little bit more behind the scenes is counseling. And this happens a lot more in high school because it's called high school for a reason. It's high stress and high expectations. And it takes a lot of guts for a student to come to a teacher and uh, present them with this problem. 
Uh, to an adult, it may seem like a really stupid and dumb issue, but to the kid at the time, it's their entire world. So that's why teachers need to be flexible and friendly and approachable so that um, students feel comfortable uh, coming to them with issues either personal or academic. Now teachers do so many, oh wait, well, how do I know, how am I going to become a teacher? Because I've done my research early, I can take the most direct paths to get there. To teach in Missouri, you need an initial, initial professional certificate. Uh, to get one of those, you need a degree in whatever you want to teach. Uh, for English, you could do so many different degrees, just plain old English, English literature, creative writing. And then uh, you would also need uh, classes on education and a student teaching experience. Now these are good, but they are no replacement for actual in-class in uh, teaching. Not just observing the teacher, but actually being the teacher. Uh, there is also base testing that um, any uh, prospective teacher would need to go through. Even if you wanted to be like a PE teacher, you would still have to take a test on math and social studies. So, you know, it's a lot of work that goes into it. Uh, you know the saying, um, those who can't do teach, Okay, it's a dumb saying, stop saying it. Because based on uh, what goes into being a teacher, it seems only those who are highly qualified teach. And teachers do so many things, um, so many great things inside the classroom, but what can they do outside the classroom? Well, a lot of teachers sponsor clubs. Uh, some of those clubs deal heavily in volunteerism, like Pay It Forward and Key Club. And especially befitting to an English teacher would be Book Club, where kids can stay after school and read books. Uh, and things that any teacher could do would be teaching overseas and after school tutoring. But where am I going to do these, all this awesome stuff? Well, Missouri State University, of course. <laughs> I got my acceptance letter about a month ago and I have a um, scholarship interview coming up. And because I've been part of the Kickapoo U program, I feel so prepared for that. I feel more com uh, com ew. comfortable and confident about starting college here. Uh, with Kickapoo U, we do a lot of volunteerism, and at first we have to do 150 volunteer hours uh, by the end of our senior year. At first it's like, ew, I don't want to do that, that's gross. But once you start doing it, it really becomes a habit, and you get a sense of community, and really get to see how many things depend on volunteers. And with the dual credit, because, okay, I really like this part, because why would you want to take the same class twice and then pay like $200 to take it again, when you can just take it one time for like 90 bucks? I don't know why more people aren't doing this. And with the job shadowing and internships, you really get to see if a job is up your alley or not before you really start to consider it. And even if you do an internship and you're like, yeah, this is great, and you start to pursue it, and then you don't like it, that's okay. Because the road goes ever on and on. And you're not defined by your career, and your career does not define you. Because who you are in high school is going to be so much different than the person that you are when you want to start looking for a career. So even though we're trying to cut down on uh, changing your major um, five or six times, it may only happen two or three times now that we've been through this program. And so the road goes ever on and on, and on and on it shall go. Thank you.